First off, finding the work done on the block by the gravitational force is fairly simple. First off, let's just remember that the basic formula for work is that it's equal to the force being applied to the object multiplied by the distance over which the object is being moved. In this case, I'll label that as sub g to represent that this is the work done by the gravitational force. Because we're talking about gravitational force, this f term here can just be replaced with mg, since that is the formula for the force due to gravity. Already we found a formula that we can use to get our answer, because we are given the mass of the block, as well as the distance that the spring is being compressed by, 12 centimeters, and g is just a, a known, 9.8 meters per second squared. Of course, what we should do before we actually make any calculations is make sure we're using SI units. So this 250 grams becomes 0.25 kilograms, and this 12 centimeters becomes 0.12 meters. Now this is something we can more comfortably put into our calculator and, and get a reasonable answer. And this should give us 0.29 joules. Part B is also fairly simple. Now we're looking for the work done on the block by the spring force. Now we have a formula for this that's given to us. The work done by the spring force is equal to negative one-half times k, the spring constant, times d squared, where d is, again, the distance by which the spring is being compressed. d and k are both given to us by the problem, though k is given to us as 2.5 newtons, newtons per centimeter. And if we want to convert that into SI units, we'll want to convert that into newtons per meter. So using the basic uh, method for unit conversion, that just becomes 250 newtons per meter. If you put this into our calculator, we find a work of negative 1.8 joules. You wouldn't want to vape out of this. Did I make that joke right? Part C is a little more involved. Now we're looking for the speed of the block just before it hits the spring. Now we're not given any information about how high up the block is dropped from, so we can't use any kinematics formulas for this. But we can find the answer, nevertheless, using the work kinetic energy formula. The work kinetic energy theorem tells us that the change in kinetic energy over a certain period of time is equal to the sum of the works that were applied over that period of time. It becomes obvious how this, this can help us once we expand out this change in kinetic energy term. As the block lands on the spring, the force of the spring, and the energy being put onto the spring because of that, slows down the block's speed to zero as the spring is compressed fully. So in other words, the, spring's final or the block's final kinetic energy as the spring is, is compressed is zero, and we subtract from that the initial kinetic energy as, the block, hits the, as the, the block hits the spring, which I've just written as the formula for kinetic energy, one-half mv squared, where I've used v sub i to represent the block's speed as it hits the spring. This vi term is what the problem is asking us to find, so let's rewrite this formula algebraically to solve for vi. We can do this by dividing both sides of this equation by one half, by negative one half times m, and then taking the square root of both sides because we'll still have the vi squared here. So that negative one half is now on the right side, except now it looks more like we're multiplying the right side by negative two, and the m is in the denominator there now. So now we'll take the square roots of both sides to get the vi on its own. Now we're ready to solve this part. m again is just given to us by the problem. And the two work values, w sub g and w sub s, were, but were, those are just what we solved for in parts a and b. So we'll just plug those in, and we should get an answer, or if your calculator should tell you an answer of about 3.471 meters per second, give or take a few digits. Though if you wanted to be prim and proper and round to the proper number of significant digits, then you might instead want to write this as 3.5 meters per second. Finally, part D is where things get a little tricky. Now we're talking about a hypothetical where we double the speed, the speed that we just found actually, and try to use that to find the compression of the spring, even though that was originally given to us in the problem. 
So we'll have to kind of do what we just, just did for part C, but work backwards in a way, which can be a little confusing. However, it doesn't have to be super difficult because we can begin just by, st we can start off the same way we started off in part C, by looking at the work kinetic energy theorem. Here, I have basically just rewritten the formula we started out with for part C, except I've added little primes to the values for speed and work, since now that we've changed the parameters of the problem, those values will not necessarily be the same. After all, we know now that we're doubling the speed, and that will likely affect, and that will affect the work as well, since that's going to change the distance by which the spring is being compressed. In fact, since we'll no longer be able to use the same work values that we found in parts A and B, I'll actually expand out these work terms. I've replaced the W sub G term with the expanded formula for the work due to gravitational force, and I've replaced W sub S with the formula for the energy due to a spring. Now here's the kicker. We want to solve this for D prime. Remember, the problem's asking us what the maximum compression of the spring is due to the speed. So we'll want to rewrite this formula to solve for D prime. Based on the structure of our equation here, we'll have to do that using the quadratic formula. So first, I'll just I'll start off simple here. I'll just rewrite this equation so that it's in quadratic form as such. And now let's rewrite this to have an equation for d prime using the quadratic formula. And this is kind of what it should look like, though if you want you can simplify out these little terms here with the, the four and the halves. And now we've got a pretty good formula here made up from terms that were given. It's worth noting that with the quadratic formula there's always a plus minus symbol here because there are two roots. Now, in this case, we should use the positive root, since using the negative root will give us a negative number, which makes nonsense, which doesn't make any sense in this case, since the spring's not going to compress in a negative direction. The block can't travel in a negative distance, so we'll have to use the positive root, since that's the only one that makes physical sense. The one last thing that's important to note here is the value that we're using for vi. Remember, the problem told us that we're talking about the speed being doubled. So we should take the answer we got for part C and then double it to plug it into VI for our formula here. I should note, however, that I wouldn't recommend using 3.5 since whenever we make calculations that are based on calculations we made earlier rather than givens, then it's usually best to be as precise as possible with the value we're using. So if you, if you still have your earlier answer in your calculator, for example, then I would go back and select whatever answer your calculator gave you for VI. Uh, like, for example, uh, I would much rather use 3.471 than 3.5 because that's going to retain much more of the precision that is actually within the calculation, since using these rounded answers might just uh, distort the values a bit more. In the end, if you do all that correctly, then we should find that the new distance is equal to about 0 0.23 meters. And that is our final answer to all four parts.